Hello folks, thanks for joining me today for a very special webcast. We've got some guests on the line today. My name is David McKittrick, I'm Senior Application Specialist at Blue Marble Geographics and I'm joined today by Rob, Paul and Adam from 40 Mapper all the way down under. How's the weather down there today Rob? Oh, it's heating up here, David. We're uh, yeah, looking at a, a scorcher. We've had a had a hot month the last one. If Not you, like uh, your blizzards and things over there. I was just going to say, if you could send some of that our direction, just a little bit, that would be very helpful. I'm looking at the window here, a lot of white stuff on the ground still, but our, our time will come, our time will come. But well, we're delighted to have you here today, we're delighted to have uh, 40 Mapper. Um, really looking forward to this presentation. Uh, this is going to give us an opportunity to explore uh, kind of an application of global mapper technology that's not uh, something that most of our audience would be familiar with. So uh, uh, very excited about this presentation. Um, very quickly what we're going to be covering today, um, obviously we're going through some introductions here. I'll let Rob uh, maybe introduce his teammates in just a second as well. Um, I'm going to begin my part of the presentation by introducing Global Mapper and probably introducing Blue Marble Geographics as well. This is intended for those of you who are watching this that have come to this presentation from 4D Mapper side who maybe are not familiar with Global Mapper. The technology that we're ultimately going to be showcasing today was based in this desktop application Global Mapper. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a context, a little bit of an historic perspective if you like. So very brief, I promise I won't take long, very brief introduction to Global Mapper and we'll look at some of the key features and functions. Again, this will help put into context uh, what the folks at 4 Mapper are going to uh, showcase a little bit later in our presentation. So I'll, I'll fire up the software, go through uh, a, a specific workflow so we can see how it works in the actual interface of the application. Um, we'll also talk uh, by way of segue or by way of transition about the Global Mapper SDK. As you will learn, uh, the folks at 4 Mapper are using this software development kit to integrate much of Global Mapper's core data processing functionality into their platform. So um, I'll very briefly speak to that component of Global Mapper before then transitioning over to, uh, to Rob and, and the team to talk about their use of the SDK and to look at that in action. And this is what I'm personally very excited about. I want to see how this actually works, see Global Mapper in a different context. So the first bullet here, you can see introductions. Let's, let's formally introduce ourselves. Um, uh, my name's David McKittrick. I've been with Blue Marble Geographics for about six years. Um, I do a number of, I perform a number of different roles for the company, including doing webinars such as this, training, a little bit of sales help, a little bit of marketing work as well. Um, my background, I've been in the GIS business for, boy, better part of 30 years now. So uh, um, I, it's a you know, very exciting technology. I'm seeing on a continual basis some of the evolution and the, up, uh, the enhancements that are being made to, to GIS. And again, uh, what we're going to see today is an example of one of those. Um, Rob, I don't know if you want to take the mantle here, maybe a little introduction to yourself and your colleagues. Sure. Yeah, thank, thanks, David. Um, thanks for setting up the webinar. Um, so yeah, Rob Clow here. Uh, I'm uh, founder and CEO with uh, Adam, our uh, co-founder, CTO. He's he's the, the the brainiac behind a lot of um, 40 Mappers brilliance, and we have uh, Paul, our our business guy, our third partner in the in the team. Uh, so yep, yeah, we're we're an Australian company, uh, very global customer base. Um, 40 Mapper as a product has um, is across industries in mapping, resources, asset inspection, utilities, insurance. Um, we're, we're currently focused on on our enterprise customers and expanding the product through API connections uh, with partners such as as Global Mapper, as we'll, we'll learn a lot more about today. Okay, so the first uh, kind of to-do item here is to introduce Global Mapper. What exactly is Global Mapper? Well, at kind of very basic level, it's a desktop GIS application. Um, it has been in, uh, available in one form or other for the better part of 20 years. I just recently wrote an article on, a, on the history of this application, and it actually goes back 20 years. It started as a, a project for the U.S. Geological Survey. They needed an application for viewing data, and they basically built this freeware application that would eventually evolve into a commercial application that would become Global Mapper as we see it today. Um, it, it's a fully functional kind of flexible GIS application and you'll see in just a second when I go through some of the, the uh, specific workflows, um, it, it, it hits on 3D analysis, it hits on vector attribute analysis, raster processing, so it's, it's all encompassing. 
Um, we like to define it as being easy to use and inexpensive. Those are the, the marketing blurbs that you'll very often hear. Uh, one of the defining characteristics of the application is its format support. And, and many people who have been introduced to Google Mapper have been, ha have, have, started using it because of its interoperability. Uh, my first experience before I worked for Blue Marble was as a, a, a GIS um, technician in another company and I had a copy of Google Mapper simply because I needed something that would convert files from one form to another and at last count we're over 300 fo file formats supported so it is the epitome of interoperability. We've got a complete suite of vector raster tools, as I mentioned before, um, you know, all your digitizing and drawing functionality, your raster processing, raster calculation, raster extraction, those are all part of the package. Um, one of the major focuses that we have shifted towards, especially in the last three or four years, is working with LiDAR and point cloud data, uh, increasing importance across a variety of industries. Um, we've actually built a module into Global Mapper to provide advanced functionality. In fact, I'll be using some of those tools today to show you an uh, example of some workflow. But uh, working with 3D data, terrain, feature extraction, uh, point cloud generation from from uh, from UAV images, another thing we've just introduced to the package as well. So again, working with point clouds is a major part of, uh, of Global Mapper's functionality. And as we will see, uh, this software includes an SDK uh, allowing for custom development work, allowing you as a developer to either adapt the software to your needs, you can build an extension for instance, or uh, to integrate some of the components into a third party application, or as we will see, into a cloud based application. So without further ado, let's take a look at Global Mapper in action. So here we have the basic Global Mapper interface, and it's a fairly intuitive application. Um, yeah, we, we typically would you know, suggest that if you challenge somebody who is completely new to this technology to open a file, if they can read, chances are they'll be able to achieve that. So get, getting started with GIS and getting started with Global Mapper in the field of GIS, it's a good combination. It's a fairly simple and intuitive application. Um, it, as I said in my brief introduction, it's got a slew of digitizing tools, drawing, uh, vector editing, uh, buffering, all that uh, type of functionalities available in the application. Um, um, uh, format support, online data support, spatial database supports are all included in there as well. So getting access to data, both reading data and writing data out, it's part and parcel of the application. Um, I'm just going to pop up some sample data here so we can see a little bit more of the application in a more specific context. This is just some sample data we throw in just for, for uh, playing with some of the tools if you like. Um, one of the things, obviously, is, is managing attribution. We've just introduced a, a brand new function in Global Mapper for managing attributes and for uh, integrating things like attribute joining, attribute calculation. So we can take a quick look at that. These are all dockable windows, by the way. This is obviously a map of the world. So we're seeing an attribute table uh, representing some of the uh, characteristics of the countries in here. If I needed to modify these or, or display them thematically, that's also a possibility. In fact, I'll do that workflow very quickly here, uh, quickly distinguishing the countries based on some variable. Um, I'm going to change the appearance uh, based on the continent, just as an example, and we'll see if this actually works. This is untested, by the way. Oops, wrong button. Let's try a different one. Um, I'm going to choose to vary based on the continent, which is a field in here. If I can remember my alphabet, C is right here. And we'll go ahead and load those values. We'll give this a default fault color solid color, I'm going to start with a red color. It will randomize them thereafter. So click OK, and yes, we want random colors, and we'll just click OK to that. And I didn't choose the colors, <laughs> it wouldn't have been my choice, but if I spent a little more time, I could uh, design something a little more aesthetically pleasing. But here's just an example. You know, we started with some basic data, and now it's essentially telling you a story. It's conveying information, albeit very simple, just the, the uh, distinction uh, of the countries based on their continent. So again, just some vector data, some visualization, working with attributes. What's probably more meaningful, as I mentioned in my introduction, is some of the work that we've been doing with 3D data. I'm going to quickly switch to another instance of the software that I have preloaded. And this is an example of a point cloud. This point cloud specifically happens to be one that was generated within the application in a new tool for uh, that we recently introduced for generating uh, dense point clouds from uh, 
error from UAV images. It, it applies the principles of photogrammetry to generate a point cloud. It's not a LIDAR file in the traditional sense, but ultimately you can do a lot of the same things with this point cloud. Uh, you can see visually we have each point in this point cloud has an RGB value, so it's displaying in a photorealistic uh, visualization. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to show a few more of the tools here that are very specific to working with uh, the application itself. For instance, our 3D viewer. Um, the 3D viewer, basically as the name implies, will give you a three-dimensional perspective, uh, an interactive perspective of any 3D data. Here we're looking at the same point cloud now, obviously from an oblique perspective, and we can tilt and we can pan it around. We could, if we had uh, time, demonstrate a fly-through tool that we can actually use to create a movie flying through the terrain or flying through, in this case, the point cloud. So visualization is important, and obviously that's a key uh, part of what we have here in Google Mapper. Another really interesting tool when you're dealing with data like this is um, using our profiling function. Now, this is going to bring up another window. It's a little bit large here. Let's bring it down in size slightly. I'll just reduce the size of the window. In fact, it's a dockable window. If I wanted to dock it in the interface, I could do that. But we'll just leave it like this. Now, what we're looking at here is a cutaway cross-sectional view based on the line that you see here. So you're seeing now what the terrain or what the underlying ground model looks like from a lateral perspective. The pink area basically represents the swath through which I'm actually looking at the points. So it just kind of, again, gives us a cross-sectional view. Global Mapper includes a, an array of editing tools when you're working with point cloud data, from simple point classification, point deleting, QC to rectify uh, the uh, uh, vertical accuracy based on ground control. So there's a lot of different functions that we can perform. Noise removal is another one I should mention as well. But when it comes to simple editing, very often just removing some anomalies in your data, such as these little guys right here, I'm not sure what they are, but they probably shouldn't be here. I've got tools in the application for simply selecting and editing if necessary. So just highlighting those points, if I needed to, I could simply delete them. So when it comes down to just micromanaging the data, performing some very basic edits, that is certainly part of the package as well. So, And obviously I'm able to do that from this side perspective, from this profile perspective, because I can easily isolate anomalies such as you're seeing in this case. Now, as a raw material, this point cloud doesn't really have any value. There's no intelligence in the data. Uh, in fact, if I change the visual characteristics of this point cloud to render the points based on their inherent classification, it comes out as gray. Now, I'm not, I don't have a legend displayed, but if I did, that would imply that all of these points are unclassified. And from the RGB values that we saw uh, when we looked at the initial view, we know that there are trees, there are a few buildings to the side, I think there's a few vehicles as well, cars or trucks. So if I was to generate a, a, a surface from this point cloud, it would give me a lot of strange anomalies. Uh, we would need to do some cleanup, um, obviously in order for that ground model to be more precise. So one of the tools that we've introduced and one of the most powerful functions within the application when working with point cloud data is the ability to identify and reclassify points that are likely to be ground. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the particulars of the settings in here. I believe my settings such as they are are as they should be. I'm simply going to click OK with these established and hopefully we will see that the visual display of this point cloud has changed and it has identified through a specific algorithm that identifies the geometric patterns within this point cloud, those points that are likely to be ground, uh, removing or, or ignoring those that are non-ground buildings, high vegetation, things like that. It's with a high level of confidence now that I can generate a surface knowing that it likely uh, represents bare earth. Now there are a few other, a few additional uh, procedures I can follow that will ensure that any surface model generated adheres to, again, a DTM or bare earth model. One is through the process of gridding. The, sur the transformation of our point cloud into a raster surface, which is the basis for a lot of our analysis tools, but that procedure allows me to do a further level of filtering. And I'm going to initiate that process right now. So the gridding process allows me um, to identify within a defined area the minimum value. Now my points, my spacing right now is going to be an automatic multiple of the uh, measured density of the point cloud. I'm going to make that a multiple of two. So within a, an, an area of that size, or an array of areas of that size, 
it's going to look for the lowest value, the lowest elevation value on the assumption that there's a higher level of confidence that that point is likely to be bare earth. Again, this effectively eliminates any localized anomalies in the data by targeting just those points that represent, uh, that represent bare earth. A um, few other settings in here, once again, I'm going to ignore, but the, again, the consequences of this process are going to be the generation of a terrain surface or a D. TM. I'll just call the new layer that I'm about to create DTM. We'll click OK and it shouldn't take too long and you will see if I look over here on the left side of my screen we have our layer management component what we call our overlay control center and hopefully within a second or two here we will see a surface model and there we have it. So that surface model was generated, oh, you know, I just realized I forgot to filter but let's pretend I did. I left the uh, unclassified points in there but you know, don't do what I do, do what I say. Um, if I was doing this in the real world I would have removed the non-ground points that we had identified obviously to give me a more precise model. In truth with the binning process that we established and looking for the local minimum it likely removed quite a few of those anyway but uh, um, the filtering process we can initiate a couple of ways. I'll just go back a little bit and show you how that would have uh, worked. Simply remove the unclassified or even better just enable the ground and no more and there we go. Now if I had <laughs> done this first, we probably had a more precise model, but let's assume I did. What we're ending up with now is a surface, a raster surface. Once again, we can look at this in our 3D view, and this, this is one of the benefits if, if you're looking at this type of technology. Obviously, we have a visual representation here, and very often for a lot of the analysis procedures, initial visualization is, is a critical part, a critical step in that process. You know, how accurate is the data? Are we seeing anomalies? Quite clearly, if I'm working in this area, you know, I, can, I can make an assessment or judgment as to whether it actually represents the area that I'm interested in mapping. So visualization, obviously, from a 3D perspective will help that, or again, Profiling, cross-sectional views will help as well. We have a couple of options for generating profiles. One, as I quickly demonstrated, is just simply a single line cross-section, but we have another function that will let us generate what we call a, a, a series of perpendicular profiles. Um, I'm going to initialize that process right now. Um, each of these profile views is 50 meters long. Let's bump that up just a little, maybe to 75 meters. And I'm going to create a profile view every one meter. Now you'll see the consequences of this in just a second. And we'll click OK. I'm going to draw my line now. You'll see when I draw my line, it's it's a single path line, but it's also got a perpendicular line. And it's that perpendicular line that I'm seeing right here. In fact, I can transition through the terrain now uh, in one meter increments to get a better perspective of the lay of the land, so to speak. So it's just another visual perspective. I'm just clicking the arrow here on the toolbar just to transition through those various views. And you can see, again, gives me a, a nice visualization from a lateral perspective. We're dealing with terrain now. We're not dealing with points as we did before. So it's a cutaway of the terrain. So a couple more things I want to show you just by way of introducing the application before we hand over to uh, the folks at 4D Mapper. One of the common uses of Global Mapper, and, and certainly with, when working with terrain, is simple contour generation. Um, very simple process, generating contours, and I believe we may see this uh, in 4D Mapper's context as well, how they've automated this process in the, in the cloud, which is really, really cool. But here I am, I'm in the interface, I'm doing this all manually right now, I'm looking at the dialog box and you know, seeing the process being set up. Um, I'm going to create one meter contours, basically one meter interval. Um, a few other settings in here, again, I'm not going to go into the details, I think everything else should be fine. We'll click OK and we can see we've generated some contours. One of the settings I ignored there was the option to remove small areas. For instance, what you're seeing in here, these little localized anomalies. I could have set a, a minimum length threshold which would have automatically removed those if I needed to. But these are now vector lines. We could export these to shapefile, we could export these to CAD, DXF, DWG, or any format that's supported. Uh, so we started with points, we went through the process of generating a surface, now we have lines. So that's basically the multi-step procedure. Now the final procedure I want to show you again before I hand over is volume calculation. And this is a very interesting uh, application 
uh, when working with terrain. The procedure for measuring volume or capacity is initiated by in, uh, delineating the extent of what it is you want to measure. And for this, I'm simply going to use one of my digitizer tools, and I'm going to draw a boundary. Now, you can see I'm not doing this with a great deal of care and attention, simply encircling the, I believe this is a landfill, and essentially outlining the extent of what I want to measure. Now, the way this procedure works is after selecting that boundary, again, using the digitizer, my vector tool, it's now highlighted or selected, um, I'm going to ask it to calculate or to compute the amount of material that's enclosed within this polygon. Now, bear in mind that this polygon is not sitting on a flat surface. So you can see it's inclined. You can even see the, the representative colors here going from reds through greens indicate that this is actually a fairly steep incline upon which this landfill is sitting. So to solve that problem or address that issue, the way this procedure works is it samples the elevation at a specific um, increments around the edge of the polygon. Uh, there are 200 sample points. We can't see those, but there are 200 sample points around the polygon that the application looks for the elevation. It then grids that. Now, we don't see this procedure, but it creates a localized elevation grid generating a surface from which to measure. So it gives me an accurate representation of volume by sampling the volume around the perimeter and making the assumption that w w what's in between is essentially a flat surface. Um, an inclined flat surface, but a flat surface. So, the way the process works is very simple. As is typically in Global Mapper, there's a great deal of complexity in the process underneath the, the, the bonnet or the hood, so to speak, but the actual process of doing this is very simple. Um, from my analysis measurement, uh, measurement menu, we have a pile volume, and it's going to run through very quickly and give me the results. So, I can see here that the total capacity of that landfill is about, what, 2,005, uh, 20, sorry, 255,000 cubic meters. Now, going back, we've gone through about a 10-minute workflow here. We started with a point cloud. From that point cloud, going through a couple of different procedures, we were able to generate useful and valuable information about this landfill. So that is just a very quick example of Global Mapper in action. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, having just seen Global Mapper in action, uh, there is a way that you can interact with the Global Mapper engine, so to speak, uh, through third-party applications, and that's through our SDK, our software development kit. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. I'm going to leave this to the uh, experts down under to talk about their use of the SDK, but just to kind of put this in a little context, now that we've seen Global Mapper, um, you can essentially access most of the functionality within the application in a third-party uh, software, in a third-party application. So if you need a mapping engine to drive your, your database management system, the Global Mapper SDK can provide that level of functionality. And as, it see, as you see my second bullet, it mirrors most of the functionality. Uh, there's, some of the components are not uh, ported over to the SDK, are not available in the SDK, they're unique to the desktop application. But certainly most of the functionality, most of the data processing functionality can be accessed through the SDK. It also allows for the development of extensions. Now this is a very interesting uh, application. Once again, I'm going to switch back to the software very quickly here. I'm going to show you within the help menu, we have an extension and module license manager. And right here, you can actually see a list of extensions that I have activated within my build of the software. The Coast extension is actually something that's provided by Global Mapper. We built this tool and make it available free. It's not embedded in the, co the code base of the application, but it's added on as an extension. Coast, by the way, is a tool for analyzing the financial impact of either flooding, coastal flooding, or sea level rise. Uh, it brings in multiple data sets, including property values, to determine the, the not just the physical impact, but the financial impact. That's a little sidebar. We've got a couple of proprietary extensions. This one right here is from a, a client we work with in California who does some aerial survey work. So these are just examples of third-party development, uh, the, the, the fruits of the third-party third party development process that are integrated into the application itself and essentially customize the application. As a developer, you certainly have that option as well. Through the SDK, you can build your own components and, and uh, extensions, essentially, and add them into Global Mapper. 
Now the final part of this, and again the segue to the 4D Mapper application, is support for Amazon Web Services. This is something we just introduced last year. I'm very excited to be uh, using cloud-based data uh, and processing services are integrating Global Mapper into those cloud-based data processing services, not only for the actual legwork that we saw in our manual process in the application, but also for the data distribution process. So with that, I'm going to hand over to the folks in Australia and they can introduce their application of the SDK. Yeah, thanks David. Um, yeah, and no, I have to say I've, I've been using Global Mapper for decades now and it, it's it's a fantastic piece of software. It's always been in, in the top of my um, geospatial toolkit. So. Um, Around 4D Mapper, we, we leverage the cloud, so we're, our core functionality is around visualization, sharing and collaboration of 3D geospatial data. So um, everyone's familiar with the cloud. We all use it for storage, um, sharing files, collaborating with clients and so on. Some of our audience may have used processing services on the cloud where you may have uploaded data to, say, Pix4D or Autodesk for photogrammetry processing. There's, there are some things you can do on the cloud to leverage the, the compute power as well as just the storage. Um, but it only takes it halfway. If you've got to bring your, your results back to your desktop to look at it and do further analytics to you know, make it useful, um, you know, it's often fairly pointless. So um, so this is where 4D Mapper um, comes in, and particularly with the integration with Global Mapper on the cloud. Um, so you no, no longer have to shuffle data back and forth, back to your desktop to have a look at it. You, you, 4D Mapper adds a visualization, so you can keep your data there. You can look at it in 3D, inspect, measure, collaborate, share. Everything stays on the cloud and it's immediately accessible uh, in th full 3D to your whole whole team. Um, Paul, do you want to add a bit on, on this? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Rob. Um, so uh, just, just maybe quickly picking up from what Rob, you were saying, what, what, what is 4D Mapper? 4D Mapper is a cloud-based platform for enterprise. It, in simple terms, it's like Google Docs for geospatial. It is the environment for sharing, managing, and collaborating on your geospatial data. 4D Mapper provides data management and 3D visualization capabilities for all kinds of data, whether it's uh, 3D mesh models, digital terrain models, point cloud, inspection photos, or even binary files. You can bring data onto the platform from multiple different sources. You can mesh it together and then interact with that uh, via the browser. 4D Mapper offers a set of sophisticated yet very intuitive tools and workflows to support virtual surveying and 3D asset inspection, linking models with original photos, allowing users to measure and digitize, providing tagging and annotation capabilities, asset reporting, as well as simple integration with enterprise asset management systems. Because all your data is on the cloud, sharing becomes as easy as sending your colleagues a URL which will allow them to view your workspace and collaborate on your project in real time. At the same time your data is secure, you are in control of who sees what data and what they can do with that. All of that requires only a web browser, making 4D Map an extremely powerful tool, providing instant access to your data wherever you are, whether you are in the office on a desktop computer, or in the field on a laptop or tablet. You can take your data with you. That's not all. Uh, as Rob mentioned before, we grow our platform by integrating with industry-leading software vendors, allowing 4D Mapper customers access to their powerful tools on the cloud without the requirement to get the data down to the desktop. Most recent integrations, as you probably know, include enabling access to Autodesk photogrammetry services and Global Mapper Geospatial Analytics SDK. With that said, I will hand over to Adam to give you a brief demonstration of Global Mapper integration. Uh, thanks, Paul. Um, 
this is for the mapper environment. Um, you can simply try for yourself by going to uh, app.fordimapper.com. Uh, as um, Paul and Rob mentioned, uh, this is an environment for managing geospatial data in the cloud. So you, you no longer need um, uh, hardware or, or desktop software to visualize geospatial data. You can simply manage and visualize them in, in your browser. So um, on the left-hand side, we've got um, a couple of uh, tools in here. Uh, you can manage um, your account, create an account. Um, you can also um, manage projects files and folders um, in your account. We've got um, uh, layer manager, uh, layer management tools. You can manage your layers, uh, visualize them. Uh, we've got a tool to add or bring data from external servers or data from your computer. We've also got uh, processing, uh, photogrammetry processing or LiDAR or train analysis powered by Global Mappers DK. Also, we've got um, measurement toolbars or virtual saving, um, which you can digitize features, measure, um, do volume measurements, or extract features and save them to your computer. Uh, we've also got uh, assets inspection, um, which is a very powerful product. You, know, you can uh, inspect your assets or 3D models. I will give you a quick demo on that as well. And of course, you can share your project with others and collaborate with others and other team members. So um, let me quickly show you a sample project uh, that's been uploaded for the mapper as a use case. Uh, go to project manager. And here, as you see, you can create projects in here. You can create folders and organize your files and data in this project manager environment. So I've already created a project in here, so let me uh, bring that up. Um, the demo project. When you click on a demo project, then you will see the contents of that project in your layer manager, left-hand side panel. So I've got um, a 3D model from a crash site. Clicking on a model or a layer name will fly you to the area. Just enable the layers. So this is an example of a 3D model uploaded for the mapper from a crash site. And as you see, you can navigate and visualize this same um, in your browser so you don't have to have a computer, high end computer or a desktop software. As I mentioned, um, we've got tools to measure or digitize features on 3D model. So for example, I can simply measure the height of this building in here just by going to measure tool and clicking on measure. And you'll see all those related information for height, slopes, and azimuths, and other information. And as mentioned, you can digitize lines, you know, polygons, points, and save them to your computer as 3D CAD model. So back to layers in here. You can, of course, uh, add different type of data, like the original uh, images, that's been already uploaded in here. You can manage them in here. Um, we should have them on the, this folder. So these are original images that's being used for uh, creating this 3D model. And all uploaded to your 4D mapper account and you can manage them all in, in one place. To show you an example of this um, uh, 3D inspection uh, that I just mentioned earlier. If I click on inspection, so what happens in here, if you want to see what's happening around this corner, you can simply click on our inspection toolbar and, and click on this pick 3D point, 
click on a 3D object. So what happens that brings up the original photos that's used for forming or creating that 3D point on the 3D model. And you would be able to zoom to the full resolution on original images and see what's been happening in that area. So of course, this is not possible just by looking at your original 3D model. But 4D Mapper enables this for you to bring up original images and see what's been happening really in that, in that specific 3D coordinate. So this is not all. You can, of course, add um, tags and annotate annotations and, and manage them in the database or generate reports. Uh, this has been, uh, you know, this is a box that has been added uh, and we've got an annotation in here which is written to a database in the left-hand side. You can filter, you can um, uh, generate reports from database. You, you can share this project with multiple people and they can, in real time, uh, add annotations and text which would be visible for you. Um, you can, of course, add um, you know, custom fields uh, if you want to add um, uh, um, uh, kind of additional notes in here. You can create a field and then add additional notes in those fields. And uh, we've got a very handy feature in here, um, uh, a report generation which reports or extracts um, um, all of those annotations and the issues that you've noticed and tagged and, and you can share that or send that to, to, to other people. So while this is generating a report, um, I'm back to this annotation sections in here, and if I click on a different angle, different views, so you would be able to see uh, this model um, from different angles. So previously this wasn't really that easy to bring all these high resolution images. Um, and even even if it was possible, you have to have a computer and a desktop software which is uh, kind of um, able to, to read and, and to visualize this sort of data format. And then it was only you, one person. But with 4D Mapper, you can now visualize everything, all of these supported formats, common formats, and you can share that with others with absolutely no computer or, or, or a, a computer software, desktop software. So let's see if this process report is finished. Yeah, then I click on a view report. So what it does, that crops those original photos to those areas that um, the problem has been noticed. So see this um, is, a, is a rectangle and this is the zoom section of that rectangle and this is what's been happening and you just create the annotations and, and tag in here. It's a very handy feature. Um, so uh, if I get back to um, uh, 3D viewing here, close this view. This was just very quickly about um, the ascent station. I jump into uh, global mapper uh, uh, processing options that we made it available on uh, 4D mapper using global mapper SDK in the cloud. I quickly switch to another project that's got some um, point cloud data on it. It's a waste management project. So we've got some point cloud data from uh, events management in here. As I mentioned, um, um, all of these um, multi-contents or multi-format data are uh, ingested to your body mapper account and streamed to your browser. So as you're seeing in here, uh, you could see some machineries in here in this point cloud data. So um, if you want to measure the volume or generate the control line, so these machineries would be uh, would be problem. So the first thing you, you need to do to filter these machineries or non-run features out. So we made it available in, in, in Google Mapper for you using uh, Google Mapper processing tools. If I go to this um, processing options from menu bars in here, you will see the list of available tools. So we've got a few um, uh, select functions from, from Global Mapper in here. And we welcome 
we will feed back. If you need more features, just let us know what you need to have, what you need to see from uh, Global Mapper. Then we simply add that for you in, 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 in our cloud environment. So what we have in here, we've got LIDAR analysis. So you can classify point clouds or create a train model or contours or picture ridge lines. Also, we've got train analysis. So you can extract grid lines or, or contour lines. As, as mentioned, we could add more, but looking for your feedback, see what you need. As an example, if I want to classify this point cloud and get rid of these machineries in here, you just click on classify point clouds to ground points. Then I select my input layer, which is this point cloud layer. Then these settings uh, are from Global Mapper. You can find um, more details about these settings and chaining parameters in Global Mapper. Uh, but just leave this by default and just submit this for processing. So what happens in here? This point cloud dot has been processed, will be processed in Global Mapper, which is already installed in our cloud. So you don't have to have a computer, don't have to have a uh, desktop license. So you can do all of these things in your Google Mapper account. So once submitted, it will be processed and you will see the results in your layer manager. So you can, you can send multiple tasks for processing. So let's say once it's finished, you want to create a train file or a DTM model from Point Cloud as well. So you just simply come here and say, I want to generate the surface model. Then simply you select your point cloud and your output. Then you can specify your, your spatial resolution, and just say, or just leave it by default, just say submit. Then it would process your data to a train model and you would see the results in your lead manager as well. So let's see the results. So this is the point class that's been classified. If I click on this point class, and zoom into the area, or this machinery area. So you see there is no non-ground-based features in here. So they're all gone. And you can now reliably start measuring volumes or, or, or generating counters. So this was an example of how you can classify or filter point clouds in your 3D mapper accounts using global mapper tools. And if I just um, uh, click on this uh, train model that's been generated using this point cloud, So you would be able to see this in 3D. So this is a train model that's been generated using the point cloud. And um, uh, the uh, also, a photo has been uploaded to this project as well. So you can manage that also photo. You can play with the uh, transparency of the, this layer. The background is a satellite uh, uh, background. This one is the also photo, the high resolution auto photo draped over a, a train model. So it can also generate contour lines um, using global matter. From here, to see generate contour lines, and then just select uh, the train model, and then here you say contour intervals, um, say two meters, and there are some other settings as mentioned. You can you can see more, you can read about these um, um, input fields in Global Mapper, and then submit for processing. Once processed, you would be able to see that in your layer manager. 
So this is your contour lines that's been extracted. So if you click on a contour, you would be able to see its attributes. Just close this one. I'm still in inspection mode. Um, cancel inspection. Sorry about that. And um, click on here, you would be able to see the attributes for each contour lines. The similar to what you get from your this up global mapper, but it's kind of you you having all these features in in uh, 3D mapper in the cloud. So uh, we've got some other tools in here. You could um, um, extract features uh, or or measure volumes. So just quickly show you how we can do those sort of uh, uh, use those sort of tools. Let's turn this off. We come to measure tool toolbar, we've got this profile, you can extract train profiles. You can also digitize lines, features, or this kind of a virtual saving environment, or you can um, calculate volumes, you know, you can just digitize an area, click and, and measure volumes um, uh, for your train model. This was very quick and um, uh, kind of uh, a sample use case of using for the a global mapper in for the mapper environment. Um, of course you can do more and we can add more but we welcome is be seeking your, your your payback. So if you need a custom projection conversions, if you need a, a further analysis, just let us know and we'll add that for you. Yeah, thanks, Adam. That that, that was great. I, I just want to add um, a, a comment here on sharing and collaboration because it's a really key key um, value of 4D Mapper. So Adam, if you wouldn't mind clicking on the the I share um, icon there. So basically any data that's in, a, in your project, um, it will actually any data that you have selected and that current view, you can see the little, little snapshot of the view that we're about to share. Um, can be shared with your team. So you can allow the recipient to just view it or by ticking the next box, you basically can deliver your data to your client where they could download those, uh, you know, the ortho photo, the point cloud, all that, that original data. So you've got control over, over your data. If you just wanted to say, put it on your LinkedIn post uh, and show off, well, you, you don't want everyone to download your data, but they can view it and have full 3D access. You can make the link expire after a number of days. You can password protect it, and you can also turn on and off the collaboration um, functionality. So that, that, and then Adam, if you just hit the orange button there, um, it creates a URL. As simple as that, send it right from here or, or copy and paste it into an email. And then you'll notice there's one other tab there, contrib con contribute, which means you, you can basically push all of this data into another person's 4D Mapper account. So that then gives them a full copy of everything. They can share it on. They have full control. So that's, a, that's the real highest level of delivery. Um, but anyway, quick, quick overview of, of the um, controls that you have about sharing and, and collaborating yeah, and delivering yeah, your data. Thanks, Great. Hey, thanks, guys. That, that was really fascinating. And I say that from the my bottom of my heart. That was really, really interesting. Having used Google Mapper as a desktop application for more years than I would care to admit from an early, early user, this was really fascinating. And it is a reflection of how far this technology is coming. Um, and it is, I'm, I'm certainly going to be sharing this with my colleagues here internally because we work with this application every day and, you know, we have particular workflows that we're comfortable with and we have user situations that we, you know, we, we, uh, we are, we're aware of. This is a really, really unique use of that technology and it's, it's opened my eyes to the, to the possibilities going forward as to where this technology is going. Um, so before we, we wrap up for today, just a couple of uh, notes here you'll see on the, on the slide on the screen. Um, if you have any questions 
um, about Blue about Blue Marble or indeed about Global Mapper, we've got an email address here, info at bluemarblegeo.com. Uh, we're always monitoring our inboxes. Um, I do encourage you, if you want to find out more about the core underlying technology, you can grab a trial of Global Mapper itself. Uh, go to the, the website here. Um, you'll see the links right there. You can download a free trial and, and, and try out the desktop application. Uh, and back over to 40 Mapper, I guess you guys have a, an offer going as well there. Yeah, thanks, thanks, David. Um, we would like to encourage your your um, audience to give 4D Mapper a try, and particularly around the Global Mapper tools, because as Adam mentioned, it's a it's a it's an initial release. We've got a handful of pieces of functionality there. There's a lot of Global Mapper um, product we can build onto the cloud on 4D Mapper. So we'd really like to hear what people want. Um, so jump in, try 4D Mapper, let us know. Um, mention that little hashtag thing there to us and we'll, we'll drop some extra uh, credit into your account so you can really um, give it a good, good try. Uh, so that, that's, we'd just like to close on that with a, an offer to, um, to our listeners, thanks very much for for um, for watching, and uh, we hope you you get something from it, and we hope you can um, help us to build the product that really works for you. Well, Rob, Paul, and Adam, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your morning, early morning there in Australia, and then sharing that with us. This was fascinating. Um, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time and, and uh, sharing your expertise. And folks, thank you for joining us for for this uh, presentation and uh, from the Blue Marble perspective, you know, we'll hopefully see you again in one of our future uh, uh, webinars or webcasts. Thank you very much.